好，欢迎收看《美洲华尔街》，我是赵冰晶。在欧洲和中国股市企稳的帮衬之下，本周的美股呢，本应该是美好的，但是市场确实没能给个投资者好脸色，不断的震荡下行。那么承压的主要原因呢，是众多的大公司财报结果不及预期。上周银行股的漂亮成绩单，本周呢，并没有出现在科技股的身上，苹果公司也只是勉强的给出了及格的答卷。暗淡的展望，多家评级的下调，再加上 IBM、微软等大型公司业绩的打压，注定呢是让本周的市场低迷。具体来看，周一的美股呢是微幅高收十三点，希腊问题呢是迈出了重要的一步，希腊呢终于偿还了首笔的贷款，而中国股市呢也是奋力反击，重新占领了四千点的大关。那么周二开始呢，美股是大变脸，道指重挫接近两百点。苹果公司呢是在周二盘后公布了财报，显示出上季度的盈利以及营收呢均是勉强的超出预期，并且呢也是下调了未来的展望，导致苹果公司的股价呢是急跌了百分之四点五，市值呢是一下子蒸发掉了四百多亿。而在周三呢，科技股的财报不佳带来的市场卖压情绪严重，道指呢是下跌了六十点，其中墨西哥卷公司 c h i p o l e 呢是表现抢眼，股价上涨了百分之八。周四美股呢是区间下滑，道指下探了一百二十点。工业巨头们的财报呢也都是不理想，三 M 公司以及凯特皮勒公司的业绩呢都是堪忧。而在周五呢，美股是继续下滑，估值呢是连续四连阴，道指下挫超过了一百点。大家知道，生物医药行业呢是投资者最喜欢的掘金圣地之一，但是啊，大起大落的高风险走势呢，也是让许多人对其避而远之。最近呢，有一只生物医药股出现了稳健的涨幅，两次的收购再加上不错的财报呢，是让这只股票成为了本周的妖股之一。还有一只妖股呢，也是我们的老朋友了，可穿戴概念股。那么在本周科技股几家欢喜几家忧的情况下，是什么让它魅力不减呢？大家好，我是美国中文投资网记者 Laura。美国股市又迎来财报发布季，虽然科技巨头们的命运不尽相同，但是有一只前期我们非常关注的科技板块妖股，在股价暴跌后又悄悄涨回了前期高点附近。这就是运动相机品牌 GoPro 的芯片厂商 a m b r e l l a 股票代码 AMBA。今年五月中旬开始 ，AMBA 逆势上涨，几乎在一个月内实现了翻倍。然而，就在创下一百二十八美元新高后的第二天 ，AMBA 遭到 C 转做空，股价在两个交易日内分别重挫百分之五和百分之二十。不过，这份做空报告并没有实质性的看空理由。AMBA 在两天的下跌后便站稳脚跟，在经历了半个月的调整后，重新启动了上涨模式。在以三千万美元现金收购意大利私人公司 Vislab 进军智能汽车行业，以及最大客户 GoPro 宣布和 Toyota 合作的两大利好消息的带动下，目前一百二十二点五美元的股价已经接近前期高点。多家投行也都看好收购 Vislab 这桩交易，认为可以帮助 AMBA 扩大市场、提高多样性、定价和毛利率。目前 ，AMBA 已经涉足智能汽车行业和高清摄像行业未来两大科技发展趋势，并且拥有稳定的客户群和一定的技术优势。如果九月三日盘后发布的财报符合预期的话，未来股价可能进一步突破上涨。生物科技巨头之一 c e l l g e n 股票代码 CELG 最近大动作不断，让其股价走出了一波维持一个多月的上涨行情。从六月十八日启动至今，已经上涨了百分之二十四，这在如 c e l l g e n 这个体量的大公司中并不常见。六月底 c e l l g e n 宣布入股专注于癌症基因疗法的四星股 Juno 股票代码 JUNO， 二者未来将共同研究 CAR T 和 TCR 癌症治疗科技。分析师认为，这是 c e l l g e n 对未来的投资。收购完成后，众多投行也分。纷纷提升了 Cell 镜评级。七月十四日 ，Cell 镜又把 Receptos 股票代码 RCPT 以七十二亿美元收入囊中，加强了自己的炎症和免疫药物组合。这次收购同样受到广泛看好 ，Cell 镜股价次日飙升百分之六点九五。而本周四盘前发布的财报也符合上周提升后的前瞻指引，每股盈利一点二三美元，略好于分析师预期，营收同比增长百分之二十一点六，达到二十二点八亿美元，同样略高于二十二点七亿美元的预期。著名的艾略特波浪理论呢，是分析师们心中有效的预测市场的工具之一。那么，在本次旧金山 Money Show 的现场当中呢，我们就有幸采访了这位研究理论的行业专家 Steven Hartberg， 和他探讨了目前中美股市呢是处于哪一浪当中，以及投资者应当如何应对。
Steven Hatchberg 是著名的波浪理论的专家。那么现在中美两国的股市分别是处于哪一轮波浪当中呢？股民朋友们又该如何从中操作呢？我们一起来听一下。Hi, Steve. Thank you for joining us. So, would you mind introduce us a little bit about Elliott Wave Theory?、Uh, based on your theory, which wave are we in right now? Well, Elliott Wave、uh, model that we use was developed by R. N. Elliott back in the 1930s in the United、uh -huh. States, and it basically looks at crowd psychology. And he figured out that crowd psychology traces out specific patterns.、Mm -hmm. When people get more optimistic, they do so in a pattern way. And when the trend goes down, they get more pessimistic. They do so in a pattern way. So what we do at Elliott Wave International is look at these patterns because they imply something about the future,、uh, and that's what we're looking at now. It's a little bit different in different markets across the world.、Uh, for example, the United States is at the end of what we consider a, a, a fifth wave within a, a big upward correction, and the right and the Chinese stock market is in a different situation right now. So does the Elliott Wave theory also apply to the Chinese stock market? The Elliott Wave theory applies to any freely traded market where people are participating. There's a lot of volume and a lot of emotion because what we're looking at is the psychology of people as they behave in in groups. And so China is a great example of of where it works. Yeah. So where、uh, which wave、uh, are the Chinese stock market? Well, China had that big top in October of 2007 with the United States, and then had a major decline. I think it lost about 70 percent, 71 percent to Shanghai、right. uh, over the next year into late 2008. And since then, we've had this giant ABC rally. ABCs in Elliott Wave terminology means counter trend. So we had a big run up up into 2009, and then a pullback, and now a, a sharp, sharp move up into 2015.、Uh -huh. I think that move is ending or is over. Uh, you know, we had that big spike up into a high into June. We had、uh, a huge reversal down 35 percent in just 18 trading days, and、uh, it wasn't quite as fast as it was in the crash of 1987 in the U.S. market, but it's pretty close. And I think we're now turning the corner to the downside in the Chinese stock market. Then, how do the Chinese investors position best in that kind of situation? It's really tough because、uh, the government in China is trying to do everything they can to keep the prices up, but it's the same. Same thing that we did in the United States in 1929 when we tried to stop the market from going down, and we we even banned short selling in financial shares here in 2008 in the United States. It doesn't work. People have to express their emotion, and I think for the average Chinese investor, being safe right now, being in cash or cash equivalents, makes the most sense until this emotion, this negativism, plays itself out. Pessimism reaches an extreme, and you set yourself up for the next great rally. Okay, and I want、uh, to ask you about Nasdaq since Nasdaq hit a, a intraday high yesterday after it came back up、uh, to five thousand.、So. Right. This is another area where a lot of excess of speculation is is coming and bursting forth within the price structure.、Mm -hmm. Most of the Nasdaq's rally last year was made up of Apple,、right. uh, and today we've had、uh, the Google earnings come out, and people are really excited about that. And it's a very narrow rally. It's been narrowed in these giant tech shares right now, and I think it's it's usually that usually signals a sign of excess and excess speculation, and that tends to come. At the end of big long moves, and we've had a long rally since 2009. I think that rally is just about ending. Oh, okay, so you're bearish on technology stocks. We're very bearish across the board on financial assets. I think we've had a major credit boom, credit cycle within this country since uh, 2009, uh, and right now we have more worldwide debt than we do. Than we did at the high in 2007, and I think that the collapse of that debt, being it paid off. Bankruptcies restructuring is what's going to fuel what we think is going to be a big deflationary event across the world, where financial assets collapse in prices. So, Steve, what's your view about dollar? Well, the thing about the dollar is that most of the worldwide debt is dollar denominated, and so when debt has to be paid off, or you have to service it, or if it goes bankrupt or restructured, you need dollars to pay those debts. So, the demand for dollars is going to increase. As dollars are extinguished through bankruptcies or whatever, or or debt that comes due and needs to be paid off, people need dollars to pay it. So I think that's going to give a boost and a floor to the dollar. We've had a big run up. People got were very surprised. We've been very bullish since 2008 on the dollar. Well, we've had that run up, and now we've had a correction since March in the dollar. And I think that correction may not be quite over, but we're we're well through it. And once it ends, I think the dollar is going to start rallying again. And going to new highs.
Thank you. Thank you.时间呢，我们来连线沃润，来和大家聊一聊市场的热点以及值得大家关注的事件。Hi Maggie 和各位美洲华尔街的观众朋友，大家好。今天我们来说一下这个一周的这个行情哈。呃，从这些数据来看哈，今天的整个的一周呢，整个的指数呢应该下跌了百分之二 ，average。啊，虽然亚马逊的业绩非常不错，但是我们也有苹果的业绩呢，啊是比较糟糕的。呃、啊，同时呢，啊一些经济数据哈、啊，就是中国的 PMI 数据创下十五年的啊新低，啊中国的全年的半上半年的全国的发电量是创下增速，创下三十五年来的最低点，啊这是一个非常糟糕的数据，也就是说中国可能还要需要更多的量化宽松。现在维持美股在高位震荡的一个重大的因素，应该是，啊、呃，应该是说这个整个的一个量化宽松还在继续，呃，但是我觉得没有理由去看多中国的股票啊。那么，呃，我今天呢也认为呢，啊、呃，中国股市呢已经结束了调整，虽然有政府的一个支撑，但是犹如一九二九年美国股市一样，摩根家族也是。啊，对股市有了相当大的一个支撑，但是结果呢是出现了一个暴跌，所以我建议大家呢做空这个买 A S H R， 啊、呃、，puts， 呃，就是看跌中国的一个，啊、呃，就是可以看跌的一个，呃，买 A S H R 的看跌的一个股票啊 ，C H A D， 呃，这是我看好应该是去买的，现在四十四块钱，呃，到六十块八毛钱。啊，八毛七啊，那么同时呢，整个的美股市场呢也进入了一个新的调整。今天标普呢也已已连续四连阴啊，跌破五十天均线，下探二零四四这个点位是呃是就是下周的事情。所以啊，总体来看，我们已经接近了盈利季度的一个最后一个呃最后一个星期。我个人感觉没有太多的利好，我们只有不断的利空，啊、呃，因为中国呃美国的整个的 margin debt， 整个的呃借借贷的比例呢是非常的高，而且中国的股市呢已经从香港股市当中看到，大家都非常惊讶，中国的 PMI 数据在这么多的量化宽松的举措下毫无反弹的意愿，同时商品期货油价创出新低。啊，六年的新低，黄金创出新低 ，FCX 大家可以看，今天又跌了百分之十，这是铜的一个龙头股，所以这些因素使我没有办法去看多整个的股票市场。呃，当然，嗯、呃，银行股是非常不错，但是只是啊这么多板块当中一个哈。那么我们就今天说这一点。在本次 Money Show 的活动当中呢，沃尔也是和投资报告的主笔 Mark 一起探讨了当下的市场。通过研究顾问的持股以及动向来了解一下他们喜欢的板块以及美股未来的走势方向吧。Hi Mark, nice to meet you here at the Money Show.、Uh, we are Chinese investors, and our audience are main,、uh, mainly Chinese investors around the world who is watching the U.S. equity market.、Right. As、uh, we know, you are the kind of like financial digest to get all the financial advisor,、uh, advisory newsletter. And、uh, use their information, get the sentiment of the market. What do you think the market right now? Especially this afternoon, you talking about some bear market is coming.、Uh, am I correct? Or the sentiment is getting、uh, more bearish than the bullish right now? I know it's very fascinating. I tend to take what's known as a contrarian perspective on that, which is to say that when there is a lot of worry about a bear market, it's actually a good thing. Okay. And when there's too much bullishness, it's a sign that the market may have some downside risk. And Right now, as you mentioned, there is a lot of concern about a possibility of a bear market, and ironically enough, that's a good thing.、Oh. Um, I mean, here we are. The Nasdaq is at an all-time high.、Uh, the broad market averages, like the Dow or the S and P, are within one percent or so of an all-time high, and yet the average advisor we track is mostly in cash right now,、wow. which is amazing. You'd think if you and I had had this conversation. Let's say six months ago, and we said, "Okay, here we have a market with、uh, some averages at an all-time high and others close to an all-time high." I think we would have predicted that the sentiment among the advisors would also be at a very high. 
I okay. mean, we think there would be a lot of bullishness out there. But the fact of the matter is that's just not the case. We carefully track the sentiment every day. We objectively measure it. It's not just our impressions about what the sentiment is, but it's objectively measured. We look at several hundred advisors on a daily basis, and we can tell you on average what their exposure to the market is right now. And right now, most of them are not exposed at all to the market. They're in cash. Wow. And so uh, that isn't to say the market's going to go on forever. Uh, the sentiment indices that we calculate tend to have good forecasting ability for uh, a month or two mm -hmm. into the future at most. So this is a very short-term indicator, but at least it suggests that for the rest of the summer at least, the market, uh, if you believe contrarian analysis, should have an upward bias. Okay, okay. Uh, do you have a, do you get all the advisory individual picks and what do you think the most uh, they favor right now? Yeah, we do look, in order to track the advisors, we, uh, we actually trade on a, a trading platform in our, uh, on our offices. Okay. We trade all their portfolios, so we know exactly what they're recommending, how long they've been recommending it, when they sell it. We have their entire trading history. Wow. And right now, the stock that is recommended the most is Apple. Okay. And uh, right, we track about 200 advisors, and believe it or not, 25 of those advisors are recommending Apple, which is to say one out of eight advisors is tracking, uh, is recommending this one stock. Now, you might say, well, one out of eight isn't all that high, but for the newsletter industry, that is a high degree of popularity. Uh, no other stock comes close. Um, the next most popular stock is recommended by, I think, 18 newsletters right now. So you okay. go from 25 to 18, and that's Chevron. Okay. Uh, Oh, and uh, one of the oil stocks. So, uh, do you think that's the good thing for the Apple stock or Sherman stock, or why the people, I mean, the oil stock uh, just crashed recently, and you think the people just bottom fishing on the oil stock, and also the Apple, uh, a lot of people think they are going to have to big run, but after they enter into the component of the Dow Jones industry, average, the stock just doesn't move since April. I know, it's fascinating. Um, even though you'd think that because I'm a contrarian that I'd say that when there's that much popularity, it's not a good thing. But we have found that contrarian analysis does not work for individual stocks the same way that it works for the broad market. So even though the broad market, I would say, is not a good thing if there is too much bullishness, the fact that Apple is very popular doesn't necessarily mean that uh, from a contrarian point of view, you would express any concern about Apple. That isn't to say it'll go up continuously. but at least from the point of view of its popularity, I would not express concern. Okay, okay last question uh, about gold. It hit new uh, recent, high, uh, recent low. low. Uh, what do you think of the advisory? They kind of bearish or they kind of think, wow, it's going to collapse, we don't want to get rid of it. And uh, uh, the last question also is about the Chinese equity. I don't know how many advisory are kind of bullish on the Chinese equity market or no. Or right. They, well, let me first talk about gold. Uh, it turns out that it's just the opposite situation uh, as for the stock market. Here, we don't see enough of the advisors throwing in the towel. You'd expect, like as you point out in your question, that people would just be giving up and they'd just be saying, I'm never going to believe in gold again, because gold has been so frustrating to so many timers for so long. Sure. As you point out, it's hit a new, uh, a new low recently, and, and yet we don't see it. Now, they are pretty discouraged, I don't, don't get me wrong, but just the same way that if you or I six months ago had tried to predict what you'd expect in the stock market, given that we're all time high, you'd expect a lot more bullishness, and we don't see it. Okay. So from a relative point of view, you have uh, you know, relative bearishness in the stock market. Just the opposite situation applies to the gold market. So right now, if you and I had been talking six months ago and said, okay, we have gold down in around 1140 an ounce, which is down quite a bit. I mean, it hit its all-time high of uh, between $1,900 and $2,000 an ounce mm -hmm. several years ago. If we had s predicted that gold would be down as foot much as it is today, we would have guessed a lot more bearishness on the part of the advisors, and we don't see that. So from a relative point of view, not absolute, but relative point of view, we still see some timers are holding on to their uh, relative bullishness and that's not a good sign. I think with the final low in gold will be when people just throw in the towel and they say, I'm giving up on gold. It's just never going to supply me the kind of returns that I'm hoping for. And ironically enough, 
Uh, that'll be close to the bottom. Okay. So the the last part of the question is about China Chinese equity market. Do your financial advisor uh, follow the equity Chinese equity market or Chinese stock list in the U.S. at all? Absolutely. Several of the, not as many as you I bet will be the case several years from now. But right now, I think there's about three or four newsletters that focus only on Chinese equities, and then of course a number of others will recommend uh, it, some Chinese stocks among many other stocks from uh, companies around the world. Their attitude towards Chinese stocks depends on whether they take a short-term or a long-term point of view. Um, most of them take a very long-term point of view, which is to say uh, they, you know, they're going to bet on the, the, the strength of the Chinese economy, which will be the far highest determinant of how they do over the longer term, and they're bullish. Uh, on, but they're, they're, from a short-term point of view, they're quite worried. Yeah. Thank you so much. Sir. My pleasure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 那么最后呢，我们来了解一下下周都有哪些值得关注的业绩以及经济数据。江湖下周一公布的呢是六月份耐用品订单指数，该指数呢是反映了六月份制造业活动的情况。而下周三呢将会有重头戏，七月份美联储的利率决议公布。而下周四将会公布的呢是二季度的 GDP 初值，而周五将会公布的呢是七月份的芝加哥 PMI 指数。再来关注一下下周将会公布业绩的公司。那么周一呢将会公布业绩的是百度公司，而周二呢制药巨头辉瑞制药也会公布业绩。周五将会公布业绩的是埃克森美孚石油。想要随时随刻获得我们的资讯信息，请扫描屏幕上的二维码，关注中文投资网的微信公众号，不要错过名师与名嘴的投资专场秀。洛杉矶圣盖博希尔顿酒店 AM 一三零零全程直播。本期的节目呢就到这里了，我们下期再会。您正在收看的是凤凰卫视。